begin Palm Sunday, uh, we tread on the uh, straw, which reminds us of the manger. We go to the manger, we leave to the wood of the cross. We gather before the entrance of the church, we take the cross and bang on the door. The doors of every church are considered the gates of heaven, and the only key to open the gates is the cross of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. steps to Calvary with this man who is the Son of God. Today there's so much hope amongst those who shout hallelujah and wave their palm branches as he enters Jerusalem. Can you imagine the fervor his disciples must have felt as the crowd's adulation washed over their master? Then later their profound love for him as he gathers them that evening to celebrate the Passover supper. But who was with him as the searing pain of the nails cruelly forbids his raising his body for another breath as he finally collapses, breathing his last for us on the cross? The crowds have vanished. We could have stayed, but we were too scared to commit ourselves to him. His disciples had fled and gone into hiding. Gosh, we would have followed him all the way if he just had shown his power to those Romans. Even Peter, the one he called the rock, has denied his master three times and was nowhere to be found. I should have followed him with all that I'd heard and seen about him, but all those joyful Palm Sunday followers with coulda, woulda, shoulda faiths. I think it's kind of the same for us today as it was back then, isn't it? We easily label ourselves as Christians, but it's harder to commit to living it on the inside and to be willing to show it on the outside. We want to, him to prove his powers to us, so our personal prayers test him for what we want rather than humbly asking that he gift us with what he knows we need. We really do want to follow him, and we promise him we will. But then there are times when openly showing our faith gets uncomfortable. So we back off into silence, or we don't actively worship him as he's called us to do. How thankful we should feel and how blessed we should realize we are to know that our Savior came to save us anyhow. There was no coulda, woulda, shoulda when it came to our Savior, Jesus Christ. His trust in God, his Father, and his love for and his faith in us. Listen again to the first reading from Isaiah. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. Jesus, who possesses divine power over all of creation, is willing to turn himself over powerlessly to his enemies, for you and for me. And there's a second reading from Philippians today. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Our Savior, who was with God at the beginning of all time, he who is God, empties himself of his divinity to die a gruesome human death 
for you and for me. And then we finished today with the passion of our Lord. And we heard again when the centurion who faced him saw how he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. That Roman soldier was the first to truly realize that when you stand at the foot of the cross of Jesus and gaze upon him with an open heart, miraculous changes can take place. We are saved and our life begins anew. Our faith is strengthened and he gives us the fortitude to let the huda, huda, shudas fade away. My friends, that's what this coming Holy Week is all about. We will gather together for Holy Thursday evening, remembering our Lord's Last Supper and his beautiful message of love and service to others. Then at its end, we'll be invited to keep vigil for a while with our Lord just as his disciples were invited to do in the Garden of Gethsemane. My dear brothers and sisters, will you be there for him? We'll join again together on Good Friday. And as his church, we will pray for the entire world in his name. We'll come forward to the altar, reverencing and venerating his cross. And some will also return in the evening down at St. Francis of Assisi for our quiet journey through the stations of his cross when he's dead and gone and all seems lost. My dear brothers and sisters, will you be there for him? And then, alleluia, we'll rejoice together at the great Easter vigil on Saturday or on Easter Sunday as we join with our resurrected Lord Jesus, singing praise and giving thanks to God for having raised him from the dead as proof to the whole world of his total merciful and saving love for us. Who of us will return for all of the Sundays after Easter Sunday? All of the pastoral staff, Father Dolan, Father Carlos, Deacon Ed, and myself, we all sincerely invite each of you to come to the entirety of this year's beautiful Easter Triduum, and through it all, to stand for yourself at the foot of his cross, just as a centurion did. Gaze upon him with an open heart. Pray in your own way for his mercy and love, and it will be given to you. Let his passion, death, and resurrection speak to your soul. Renew your faith and your dedication to your Lord, and let your coulda, woulda, shouldas fade away.